My name is Lara Kudaisi. I help people heal from emotional pain, trauma, childhood dysfunctions for a happily ever after. My story in a nutshell is that I healed from having a child at 19, 14 heartbreaks, 15 abortions, and a divorce. I have created a program titled How They Healed. Hi, welcome to How They Healed. How They Healed, as you know, is a show where we bring people who've been through trauma, who've been through pain, and they'll come here to tell you how they healed and the journey that took them to where they are now. And I'm so excited to be the one to always bring you these beautiful stories. And as usual, I'm your host, Lara Kudaisi. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. Today we're talking about something very emotional, something very deep on how they healed, and it's heart failure. A lot of people have been through heart failure and they are not here today to tell us their story because they are probably dead or, you know, long gone by now. So that's why this gives me so much joy to bring my guest to you. She's been through heart failure and a whole lot of other things. And she'll be telling us what happened, how she went through it, and how she's here today living and doing very, very well. So guys, please welcome with me my very good friend and somebody who is a creative arts finesse in the industry, Chineze or Detonye. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you. I'm so excited to have you. Can you tell? Yes. <laughs> You can't stop smiling. <laughs> like, your story is such a, is, is one that moves me deeply. You Thank know, you. when you shared with me off camera, and I was, mm -hmm. I was really emotional. Thank and you. Um, so I just want to ask you, firstly, yes. what do you do? Before we delve into this story, <laughs> what do you do? Let's just meet you. Who is okay. Chineze? Um, Chineze, okay, I am a fashion designer. I'm an artist. I'm a painter. Okay. I'm not a musician, I'm an artist. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm a painter. I have a YouTube channel where I'm trying to convince as many Nigerians as possible to read more. I'm a mom, okay. I'm a wife, okay. and I'm a you know, professional <laughs> mother queen. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Okay, so when, when did you discover you had heart failure? Or what, what happened? Oh, Can Lord. you just walk us, walk us through? Um, over five years ago, okay. I, I gave birth to my daughter, a beautiful okay. little yeah. Um, You know, beautiful, uh, vaginal delivery, good, no drama. Then about three or four days after delivery, I started realizing, I didn't stay in the hospital, so I went home. Um, I started realizing that I couldn't lie. There's some particular parts of my body that if I laid down, my chest would hurt. Okay. I didn't really know what it was. I, I, I didn't see it. Like, you know, my first child, you don't know what exactly, your body goes through things that you know nothing about. So mm -hmm. I just thought it was one of those pregnancy things that it would pass, you know, and the, it stayed. Then at my two weeks check with the hospital, I went, I told the hospital that I'm realizing now that when I lie on some particular parts of my body, uh, my chest would hurt. And you know, they were like, oh, you're fine. They checked my BP, did the whole blood work, blah, blah, blah. You're fine, nothing is wrong, nothing is wrong. Um, my daughter was born um, about a day or two after my father, my father-in-law had died. Okay. So three weeks afterwards, we had to go for a funeral. Okay. So I think it was in going to that funeral that it started becoming quite a problem. I started realizing that I was exhausted all the time and I was sweating, like wow. I was sweating too much. Like you would think that the sun was right in my face. I was just always sweating out and then I was always exhausted. Carrying my daughter became very hectic and wow. she was born little. At oh. three weeks, she wasn't that big either. Okay. So it's like, you know, I'll try to hold her and I just realized I'll feel exhausted. I couldn't, you know, do you know when you carry a child, they try, I couldn't do all that. Um, oh. It got so bad that waking up, you know, the waking up night feeds, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. I would literally have to wake my, my husband up. Please help me go bring her. Go because bring you her. couldn't get her. I couldn't get over. I was too exhausted. Like, sometimes walking, taking a, a four-feet walk felt like I ran down the streets. Hmm. At, yeah, like a, a tiger was chasing me. I would, I'll be so exhausted. And then the sweating was just too much. And I didn't, you didn't think anything was wrong because the hospital I mean, uh, de you. Definitely, yeah, I, I knew at that point. By the time I stayed physically feeling, I knew something was wrong. But I just didn't know whether it was something extra or it just okay, came it with just... some people being pregnant. So I okay. wasn't really sure how hard it was. Um, thankfully, I have 
a beautiful family. Okay. Um, my husband's family, they are the best. I have the best Aww. in-laws in the world. Um, they came in for the funeral. So there are, there, are, there are two of them, actually three of them that are doctors. So Aww. when I stay mentioning, like, you know, this was the problem, this was the problem. And, you know, in between the funeral and all that, they would look at me and be like, okay, um, one of them just said, see, the issue is, I think it could be this, it could be this, it could be this. And he said, okay, the fourth one, definitely not least, and I'm hoping it's really not this. It could be this problem, but don't worry, you'll be fine. Just relax, you know, take your time, rest. So those things they were mentioning, mm. was it deadly? Were you afraid? Was it something that made you fear? I wasn't thinking of, I didn't think of fear at the okay. time. I just thought of care. I was trying to take care of my daughter. Oh, wow. So my, my, my focus was just care for this child, care for this child. So my mind wasn't really on fear yet, you know, until he mentioned that last one. Okay. Um, and what's the last one? The heart failure. <laughs> oh, okay, he did mention heart Yes, failure. he said, I'm hoping it's not a cardiac myopathy. This, the, I hope that's not it, but let's just wait. Then at this point, I traveled to the village for the funeral. Okay. So we're like, once we get to Lagos, you have to run through some tests, but I'm really hoping it's not this, a cardiac myopathy, and that was what it was. So um, it got really bad. Um, the day after the funeral, I couldn't sleep because I would lie down. The instant I'm zoning off, I would feel like my breath, I wasn't breathing. So I would come back up. So that just kept happening. I couldn't sleep. So I spent like four or five days sleeping, maybe four hours. It was so hard. And you were nursing a baby. I was nursing it. I'm telling oh you, in God. all of this, I'm nursing a baby. I'm exhausted from being alive. So it was a very hard, it was, it was, it was just difficult and different. I think that was when the fear started creeping in, mm. when the sleep, when I couldn't sleep because I was waking up in a panic. Mm. Imagine not breathing. That's what was happening. So it's like I would not breathe and I would wake up from not breathing. That's how I felt. So I'm like, I'm not breathing. Why am I not breathing? So it's like, <laughs> you know, I would do that. I'm still sweating a lot, you know. So it was, it was, it was hard. <laughs> it oh was very God. different, with different With your reality. husband at this time, what was he, what, was he saying anything? Um, you know, this he, man, was he trying to be strong or what was he? Um, we didn't have a conversation, let's put it like that. Okay. I could tell he was scared. Okay. I could tell he was confused. Okay. He, remember his burying his dad yeah and then so he has the, a newborn oh God. and then he has his wife just and then there was a lot of family around yes. a lot of things to tend to yes. and do oh yeah so in between all that he was a lot of times he would just be like don't worry you're going to be fine it's mm. like oh, just just relax you know i can't think so it's like the getting up like i said i have a beautiful this thing so even you know the whole you uh, you're the wife you're supposed to my mother-in-law was like see just sit mm. and stay sat don't mm. move so I was just where I was holding the baby. So even the few times when I got up, she would call somebody. Why is she? Tell her to sit down. So and then like, I must cut you here because you're married to, you're, you're Igbo. Yes. And you're married to Yoruba. Yes. You know, so you, you were going to think that was going to cause a lot of awkward. Right. And all everyone, of that. everyone I knew told me, warned me. <laughs> told me, no, don't. Not every single person, but a good number of people like, oh, don't marry from them. They don't take care of their wives very well, blah, blah, blah. Some of those so, things. That's the theory now. Uh, I don't so, know. Ha, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> guys, guys. We need her to give us a verdict. So, it's been how long now that you guys have been married? We'll be nine years this year. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm hearing. It's been beautiful. I'm t I, I, like I said, I married the best in-laws. I, oh. I married the be I married to the best family. But you know, it's interesting. His family was one of the reasons why I decided to be with him because mm. his family is they are amazing, wow. wonderful people. Wow, 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 wow. So he just you didn't have a conversation, but he would tell you you're going to be. Well, fine. he didn't know what was wrong. So what yeah. conversation was there to have? We just knew that there was this thing happening to me. We didn't know if it was normal. We didn't know how abnormal it was. But you know, immediately I got back to Lagos. They were like, okay, fine, go to the lab, check this, check this. Then I got an echocardiogram. It's like a, what's that thing called? For children, when you're doing the, what's that thing called? The scan, scan. for children, but it's yeah. for the heart. Okay. You know, they now told me that this was a problem. My left ventricle was, had, had apparently when I was giving birth, it's like it had stopped, then restarted. Then the valve that is supposed to move the blood wasn't moving anything anymore. So my, my lungs were clogged, that's why I wasn't breathing well. It was filled with water, you know, and the, the man at the lab literally told me that, thank God though, that you came now, that at the rates the, your heart was going, if you hadn't, I mean, we're, we're talking maybe stroke, maybe death, you know, those sort of things. At this point, I just thought, mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm a born again Christian, so I said, God, okay, well, <laughs> let's just keep doing this. Um, I started going through, um, you know, healthcare, 
I, I started with a government hospital at first. Um, okay, so was it at that lab that you was diagnosed? No. You took the results to yes, the hospital? Yes, of course, yes. And I then they called it what? Cardiac myopathy. They were like, it's a form of a... Can they explain it to me? Like, you know, this is what happened. The left ventricle is not moving. That's the one that moves blood to the lungs and to the brain, I think. So they were like, those, one, those ones weren't working anymore. Like, it wasn't moving, it wasn't pumping the blood anymore. So the blood is just lying fallow. You know, the fluid is just staying there. It's not moving, even though the heart is overworking. Because after a while, I said, realize that my, my heart will beat. I'll feel like it's overdoing it. Does that make any yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. Usually, yeah. your heart, you don't know it's working, mm -hmm. but I still feeling like it was working. I'm mm. like, why is it doing that? You know, so I didn't, uh, it was just that. So, so when you heard that it was this thing, yes, this, this thing, mm. how did you feel? What happened? Well, so, at first I didn't know what it was. I had to do a bit of research. Okay. Uh, of course, they begged me. Who? Don't, my my in-laws. Okay. Don't do research. Yeah, please don't do research because you would hear something really bad. So it was a thing of asking the me a lot of medical doctors around me, what do you know about this? I didn't even tell them this is what I had. I was like, what do you know? have you heard of this thing? You know, so with time, I did a bit of research. How many people have had it? How often does this happen? The word on the street is like, it's more hereditary. If it happened to your a parent or your grandparent, it could happen to you. I don't know anybody that has ever happened to, you know. And But then, you know, I don't know the history of medical science here in Nigeria, mm. so some people may have been misdiagnosed, we don't know. Yeah, yes. that's another thing. Yeah, so we don't know what exactly oh, happened. I, I lost my mom at nine, oh. so I don't know whether if that was what happened to her, mm. that's not what I heard happened to her. Okay. So there was that concern, oh. but I was like, okay, so what's the way forward? Mm. You know, I remember asking my brother-in-law, like, okay, I need to know the worst case scenario. What's, just let me know. And she's like, I'm not going to let you think that way. I'm not going to let you talk that way. I'm not going to let you, as in like, you're going to be fine. And you're going to raise your daughter, okay? Just relax. So at this point, it was like, listen. So, but what made you ask him, though? Well, like, I think. What were you feeling? Did you, were you thinking to the extreme? Maybe. I, I, honestly, I don't know what I was thinking then. I just wanted to know, like, what's the worst that can happen? Do I die? So, do I prepare for death? I, I'm one of those people that sometimes I'm realistic in the. I was going to ask you, like, most, is that how you in are? In the most, yeah, in the most stupid. My, my, my husband has a big issue with that. I'm always, I, I think of so many alternative. Um, theories to a thing so I was like okay so if I die what happens what do we do how do we I don't, I don't like it I don't like the idea but I'm like okay death just like birth is the same thing mm. it's natural it's gonna happen mm -hmm. so like if this is the time I die what do I do um, mm -hmm. you know one of the major fears for me which is what I think my brother-in-law saw when he told me you're going to start with your daughter was I, I, I lost my mom at nine oh. it was hard for me I had a, my youngest sister was at, at two years. Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't want that for my, I don't, yes, I don't want that for my daughter. So it's like, what's the reality for her? Do you understand? What does, what does this now mean? So that's where my mind was going. What can I do? So but he, he told me, we're not going to do that. We're not going to think that, we're not going to talk that. Yeah. You're going to be fine and you're going to raise this child. So I thought, okay, fine, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to raise this child. <laughs> and yeah. then I started, so. We started treatments. I started with a government hospital. Um, um, I, I think at that point, depression. I started, I started battling with depression because everyone I met that was doing the, the will I say the session with me, were much older. Mm -hmm. I'm talking of people in their 70s, in their 80s. I wasn't even up to 40. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, why is this happening to me? I started asking, like, I got, like I said, I'm a Christian, so I was asking God questions. I've been a good girl. Why would you let this happen to me? I've not mm -hmm. had a lot of kids, just one, just this one, with my husband. Why, 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 why? You know, so it's like a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of questions. A lot of anger came in. You know, I, I think I'd even let myself get into depression. I just got very angry. Mm -hmm. You know, why? Why me? I know people that are having, you know, without even thinking about it, some, oh, I didn't know a, a child would come out. Me, I, <laughs> I did everything right. So I was like, I was, I was mad. You know, that was something I had to try and sleep off of after a while. So but a lot of times my prayer was like, God, I don't know. I don't know why you would let this happen to me. But, you know, since this is happening, I know I'm going to be healed. I'm not, I'm not going to be fine. But I'm not happy this is happening to me. I cannot care for my child. I cannot, I cannot carry my child. I cannot do the swing, the wee. I couldn't do any of those things. You know, it was so hard. So anger showed up when I started that. But with that came a whole other, uh, this thing. The medication I started taking, some of my siblings, at this point, they had traveled back. Um, they stay. Um, You're talking about your in-laws. My in-laws now. They are traveled. Yes, they mm -hmm. were. They started questioning some of the medication I was taking. They were like, they don't. That this medication is okay now, but in a few years, 
and I started realizing, I'm sorry, I'm going to take this medication for years. I thought it was a thing of two or three months. We've tried, we've gone. They were like, no, in a few years, it's going to be a problem. So even though I think my in-laws, they knew, they knew what I was thinking. So uh, my brother just went, Sitchin, as a, I'm not saying you have to take it for years, but I'm just saying that this is going to be a problem a little later. So um, I now met a cardiologist that I still, we still working with. You know, personally, I feel I think it was that point I started feeling some kind of let's say redemption or some kind of peace towards the matter. But the fear, I don't know, the fear never really left. Hmm. The concern, the worry, you know, it, it never really left. It was, it was, <laughs> it was always she there. As in, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm still swirling yes. right now, and uh, yes. I, I have a lot of questions to ask you, but okay. we need to take a short break. Like oh, one sure. of the questions I'm going to ask you is. How come fear didn't come in? How come? Who helped you? What, 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 where did all these strength come from? Mm. But we need to go in short break. And then when we're back, Chineze will answer all those <laughs> questions about heart failure, who helped her, what happened, okay. and all of that. But guys, mm. don't go nowhere. We'll be okay. right back. Welcome from that break. Before we went on break, we we're talking to Chineze and we we're discussing heart failure, how she went through a heart failure and she had these beautiful, beautiful in-laws that helped her, you know, revive her face or quench her fear and all of that. So guys, I hope you sit still so that we can hear the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. So Chineze, I was going to ask you, when your brother-in-law did this and then they left, what did you think of your child? What did you think of your home? What did you think of, you know, the treatment? Did you think it was going to weigh on you, your ability to perform as a wife, as a mom, all of those things? Well, I didn't think of it weighing on me. I thought I would get some kind of relief, okay. which did happen. But you know how most medications, there's a side effect to mm. it. Like um, a lot of, there was one of the medications that I had to make sure that since my heart wasn't moving as much fluid as, po as possible, they had to start draining fluids from me. Mm. So what that meant is that a lot of times at night, I would have to get up a lot to use the restroom. Okay. So it's like sometimes six times, seven times, in addition to trying to breastfeed. I also had to stop breastfeeding, by the way, because oh. of the medication. Oh. I think that was one of the most painful parts. How um, old was your daughter when you had to stop breastfeeding? Totally. I stopped at four, four months, but they had told me at that six weeks that I had to stop. And I just remember crying that day. I just sat there in the hospital. I was like, I can't believe I'm going to stop. <laughs> because I didn't plan for it. Mm. In addition to the fact that I just liked, I liked that connection. That was all we had. Yeah, I couldn't move her or... and all that. So the only connection I had was, you... was just that. Oh. Uh, so it's like, you won't take that away too. Seriously, that means somebody else can just do it. I'll just have to lie down and stay laid. Mm. <laughs> do you understand? So it was, it was hard. But they were like, okay, they can tweak the medication, maybe reduce the dosage. I could breastfeed her, but around three months or so, I had to, for them to be able to take care of me, I had to stop. So, thankfully, I had a very nice understanding doctor that let oh. So, what was <laughs> the impact on your marriage, your relationship with your husband, you know? Wow. Um, my husband and I suffered a lot of disconnect, I have oh. to say. We were greatly disconnected. We couldn't really talk to each other. I, I didn't know that, I didn't know that was possible. Hmm. But we couldn't really, like, it's not like we couldn't talk at all. Like, we were fine. In quote, like in On public, uh, we're fine. We'll have conversations. Can we do this? Well, okay, so what are we doing tomorrow? We could, but we couldn't have, I couldn't explain what was happening. Remember, mm. I was talking from anger, yeah, mild depression. You know, him, he was very scared. All of this I found out later, okay, because he told me he just kept saying, I just want you to be fine, you know. And what that meant was that we couldn't have more kids. If I got pregnant again, my heart would stop, and that was that. So, that's yes, that's what the doctor said, yes. Every, my doctor, all my in-laws, everybody warned me, don't do it. She never don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't let it happen. You know, they were like, if you do it again, your heart, your heart, your heart it won't work. Oh, wow. Do you understand? Your heart, we don't know when in the pregnancy, but at one point, your heart will just be like, see, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. So <clears throat> they told me don't get pregnant again. Um, so like I said, it was later, like about a year or two after, when we got to a point where we could have it like a regular frank conversation. Other times, it was just like survival mode. What are we going to do to make her better, blah, blah, blah. But all he just kept saying was that, I just need her to be fine. I need her alive. Same thing with my in-laws. We need you alive. My mother-in-law, all my siblings, then even my own siblings too. We just need you to be alive, okay? Don't worry, don't be scared. So I think for my own siblings, I mean, from a family of girls, mm -hmm. all five, their concern was just like, you know, you're not gonna have more kids, what happens? Mm. What are you going to do? You're not gonna, you know, so it's like, you know, just the fact that they were so scared that something will happen to me, but it was like, so what do you do? 
is it a problem for you? Are you going to give birth? Are you going to but is it a problem anyway? for you, though? Uh, was it a problem at the time? Um, I don't know. The way I processed, I processed it. I just needed to be fine first. That was wow. just it. I just needed to be fine. You know, I, um, now, occasionally, till now, I still think of it, and I feel, I feel disappointment. Mm. Um, I grew because up from, you've not had another Yes, child. I grew up from a big family. I told you about my mom dying. I don't know how I would have survived that loss without my siblings. Mm. So when I look at my daughter, she's going to be six soon. Mm. I'm like, she's not going to have that support system. Mm. Yeah, stand. During this era, this COVID era and all that, we do video calls, all five of us. We sit down and talk and laugh, mm. you know, through whatever it is that is going on. We've lost our dad too now. So mm. um, all of us being together helps. Cool, so like my, sis my daughter doesn't have this support. It's, it's a concern for me. I, I'm still thinking of creative ways <laughs> to okay, take care so of that. I expose her to her families. I try to make her have as, as many friends around as possible. But I don't, I don't know if, if it's quite the same as having a sibling. But really, I don't know. I keep thinking of a creative way around it. Mm. But um, as the Lord would have it, as of um, August 2020, I was declared good. <gasps> oh my God! <laughs> yes. what, wait, wait, before I get too excited, <laughs> what does good mean? Well, I stopped taking the medication after okay. five years. Oh, wow. I stopped so taking the medication. That you're cured from? Yes, I'm cured. My heart is back to normal because they had to wish, my heart had, the left ventricle had gotten too big, like three times its original size. So they had to get it back to normal size. The valve had to start pumping um, the blood again. So it's back to normal now. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so beautiful to yes. hear. That's so beautiful to hear. Yes. You know, so now, do you not think, are you thinking of having more kids? Is it going to be a problem no. now that, you know, the ventricle is back yes. and everything? The, I think the, the fear is still there. The fear that I didn't know was there or the concern. I just keep thinking, what if it happens again? Uh, my daughter is six now, so I'm worried about her. I don't, again, I don't want to go. Do you understand? Um, the fact is that there is a possibility that it will happen. I was told that it can happen again. Again. Uh, so you um, have that on the back of your mind yes, that it can happen at the any possibility point of, in time. A of a repeat is pretty. Okay, so let me ask high. you this last question. Talking about healthcare, yes. how has that impacted you know your healing process in this country? Because you didn't travel out at any point. No, in I time. didn't travel not okay. to take care of this. I did okay. travel, but not because of this. I just okay. traveled because I. Um, I had one of the best cardiologists in the world. I and the person is know. in Nigeria? He's in Nigeria, yes. Wow. I, I met him through my in-laws. My in-laws went to school with him. Okay. In the, I was like, okay, let us find, you know, and found him. The man is, he's an amazing man. Oh. Once I met with him and I talked with him, my mind actually stayed receiving some form of rest. He would mm. check on me as often as possible. If I had any concern, I could share with him, no frown on the face. Mm. No, uh, how can you say that? No, he understood my concerns. He understood my, this thing, and he was willing to... Help to help you. Yeah. Wow. So help. Did that helped your mental health? Greatly. Yes. So what about Greatly. your marriage? My marriage? Oh, my my Oh, my, my, I think knowing fully well that my husband wasn't carried away by the theory of, ah, I want a child. I want a, mm. a son. You know, that, that mm. actually went out. Of, my husband just said one thing consistently. Mm. I just need you to be fine. Mm. I just need you to be fine. It's as if all of them, were, they had sat down, had meeting, and they decided to use that chorus mm. because all of them were saying the same thing. From my mother-in-law, everyone else, we, need, we just need you to be fine. We need you alive. We need you to be fine. Mm. So it's like he just kept saying that. So even though I would say, ah, what about this one? I can't even have it. But you're alive now. Yeah. Mm. Please now, just stay alive. We want it like that, you know. So it was like, I think I'm more worried about the whole theory of not happening. But I have a sister. I have one of my one of my sister in law. She's also a therapist. She she talks to me about mm. my my concerns. Even the whole having siblings, blah blah blah. You're like you have to be clear. Mm. You have to be clear mm. of how whether you're not pushing your own. Um, life, yes, or... into your child because mm. if she gets older, she would start to sense it. Mm. She will start to sense that you regret not mm. having more kids, that you're trying to put your answer, so like, project uh, your own fear on, on her. her. So, like, those things try not to uh, so, do that. Yes, so oh. Trinity, thank you so much. I'm so <laughs> glad you're fine now. I'm yes. so so excited yeah. because, <laughs> and like I said earlier, a lot of people were not here, mm. you know, to tell the story because yes. anybody, you know, you could have lost your life. Most people, yeah, most people years. die from it. Some people on the table there after they give birth, they give birth and they just die. Wow, it's actually one of the leading causes of that. Wow, thank you yeah. so much for sharing this with us. <laughs> so, guys, for me. wow, you've heard everything Chineza said. Mm. You have to have hope. She had mm. hope, she had strength, mm. you know, and she had the will to keep fighting. I always tell you on how they heal, you know, that you need to have hope, you need to have strength to keep fighting. 
you know, if you don't have hope, you can't even seek for help. So we're glad that I could tell Chinese's story today and thankfully it ended well. You know, I always tell you before I leave, that it's never too late to live happily ever after. Bye for now.